Today I'm going to teach you how to do the experiment that turns off your body's gravity. Let's build it. The only thing you'll need that's a little more expensive, you'll have to buy, is a mirror. We are going to use a 60 cm by 40 cm mirror here. It's more or less the pattern you find in bathroom mirrors, okay? I have to confess to you that we had made this beautiful box in 6mm MDF, laser cut. It turned out wonderful, but we know that not everyone has a laser machine in the back of their garage. So, let's make it out of cardboard. There's only one math account you need to make to build the box, because, probably, you are not going to find a mirror that is exactly 60 centimeters on that side. So how do you calculate the box size from the mirror? You will measure the longest side of the rectangle and divide that length by root 2. Just to be clear where this number comes from. If you have a square and that square has 1 meter on a side, for example, the diagonal measurement will be 1 meter times root 2. But our case is the opposite, we already know the diagonal, but we don't have it the side. So, instead of multiplying by root 2, I divide it by root 2, which will be, my diagonal, my mirror over there, is 60 centimeters and I divide it by root 2. If your calculator doesn't have square root 2, root 2 is 1.4. The result is this one. The result of this account will be this measure here, okay? The edge of our cube. And it's important to say that it's the edge on the inside, okay? So, this is it here, which will be smaller than the measurement on the outside, because the outside also has the thickness of the material you are using. In our case here it is 42.5 centimeters. You can leave a margin of about 2 millimeters more, okay? Just to fit the mirror a little bit. Let's cut the base. You can see that there is this big hole here for people to put their foot through. Very important, there is a diagonal here in the box that this hole cannot go through, okay? Because the mirror will be supported here in the middle. If you pass the hole, it won't work. I'm going to change the blade, because cardboard needs a very sharp utility knife. The measurement of this square that I'm cutting is a little bigger than the one I mentioned because I have to consider the cardboard that goes on top of it. I was grumbling here because of the size of my square, which is very small, but I can use the mirror as a square. To make the hole, I'm calculating a side strip of 4 cm that will be the cage, the structure of my entire box. I have to see if my foot will fit in the hole I'm going to cut here. If your foot doesn't fit, you can cut a little off that edge, no problem. My foot is going through, but I'm going to cut a margin here that I'm sure it's going to get tangled up in me, and I don't want to. It looked similar. Now let's make these structures here. Have you gotten the logic of what we're doing, right? And you know you can do it by cutting it with a utility knife, but you have to see what the laser does with cardboard. I need 24 cardboard bars, 4 cm wide and at least 45 cm long. The advantage of using the laser is that cardboard is a material that cuts very quickly, much faster than MDF. I need to confess something to you. Sometimes we build some cool things out of cardboard here at Manual do Mundo. We already made, for example, a machine for picking up plush toys, we already made that basketball arcade, but we noticed that several channels show a utility knife cutting there, when you look closely, I'm pretty sure they cut it with a laser. Because the cut is so perfect. It's not easy to see that this was burned to cut, you can't see anything burned here. I don't think I need to explain much to you here, I'm building a cube using these cardboard sticks. I'm taking great care not to make the hot glue too obvious at the end, okay? I don't want to see a bunch of hot glue dripping into my box. I only have this concern on the front of the box, the part that goes to the back, that nobody will see. I can smear everything without any problem. Another concern here is that the structure is strong enough to lift the mirror, because the mirror is not the lightest thing in the world and if it falls to the ground it won't be very nice either. Let's get the mirror. It fit beautifully, oops. It fit nicely, leaving those millimeters I calculated. I'll tell you that we didn't really want to do that, but if you glue the mirror to the box, it's much more resistant. It's nice to put a bar of cardboard on to hide the top of the mirror, so you don't see the edge of the mirror. I'm going to do the same thing below. Box ready and look at this crazy thing. You think you see me behind that box, but I'm not behind it, no. I am here. 
Before I go floating around with this box, let's just figure out what the physical logic is here. Why can I make one foot fly inside this thing? A really cool property of mirrors is that the distance from my nose to the mirror is the same as the distance from the mirror to the reflection of my nose. So, what you're seeing here now is just half of the box, the other half is all the reflection. Only it looks like the box, because the distance is exactly what it would be if it were the full box. But there is a detail of the human body in this story. Our body is also mirrored, we have one side that is identical to the other. I mean, it's almost identical, right? In fact, if you take a photo of me, cut it in half and mirror it, you'll notice that it doesn't look exactly like my face, but one side is very similar to the other. So, if I put my left leg here in front of the mirror, there will be a reflection and you will imagine that reflection is my right leg that is there because there should be a right leg right there. The moment I lift my left foot, you'll have the impression that I'm lifting both. In practice, it looks much nicer. When doing the joke, you have to be smart with the floor because it has to look like the mirror is a continuation of the floor. What you're seeing here now, you're probably seeing a bit of the pool. The floor is all misaligned, you can't convince anyone that this is a real image and not a reflection. Ideally, you align one thing with the other. Let's see if it will work. Here on the grass, where the ground is more uniform, the effect is perfect. You can see that you are imagining that there is the skeleton of the cube there, it is there, but it is not. You're only seeing half of it. So I put my leg here, it disappears. Then I put the other one. You get the impression that I'm showing them both. I'll try to pull myself by the hair. Think it's easy to float? <laughs> 183 pounds here, it's not easy to hold in the air, no. Is it worth a thumbs up or not worth a thumbs up? I'm putting a little block here, because it was very difficult to stand on tiptoe. It's much easier when I'm floating to stay on top of the block, because both legs are at the same height. For this effect to work well, we would need a completely uniform floor, because I can move the mirror and you won't have the impression that something is moving there. I'm flying inside the box. <sighs> Last effect now that's pretty crazy. Using the same principle that I told you about, of the mirror using our body that is already mirrored to make it appear that one part looks like another, but that it isn't, let's take this mirror here so I can fly with a broom. It's at these times that we discover that the painter wasn't very careful, right? I'll try to keep the mirror upright here without the risk of tipping over. Now I have to align the mirror like that, it has to. The reflection of the floor looks like it's the continuation of the floor. Man, it's really crazy flying on a broom. But it's hard to keep balance on top of it here. It's not easy, which is suffer, see? It must be hard to learn this. This one is easy to do, huh? Three hands. If you enjoyed this experience and feel like doing it at home, check it out before another one, which is the severed head illusion. This one is very strange and only goes two mirrors. <laughs>